This is Educated Artistry. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Educated Artistry. Today, I'm super excited. As you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, I am joined in person by my friend Megan McFadden. We actually have known each other since preschool, I'm pretty sure, like a long time. We grew up together, went to high school together, and we were just talking before we started recording this. I don't think we've seen each other since graduation, so it's been 11 years, which is wild. But Megan is also a lash artist, and she's an entrepreneur. She's an avid traveler. So I'm really excited to have her here just to kind of talk about, I want to talk about like your career because I feel like we've never really like dove into that, what got you started. And then we're also going to talk about relationships, which will be a fun one and talking about relationships that, you know, uh, maybe have held you back in the past. So I think this will be a really cool, like vulnerable episode that we can share. Cause like we were just saying before we started recording, like I've never really talked about my experience with my relationship where I felt really held back. So I think it'll be good whether you're in like a significant relationship where it's with your family or friendships too that it can kind of relate to all of that because I feel like when we get into like the entrepreneur field it's very different so thank you for coming out here yeah thanks for having me I'm super excited so I want to just like start with talking about when did you start doing lashes and like what got you started in 2014 Mm -hmm. it's crazy almost 10 years the person I was dating at the time his mom was doing lashes so she kind of forced me into it like you can pay your way through school for whatever you just decide to do. As long as you like build a clientele, you could make all this money. And then I kind of just got hooked into it and loved it. And I was like, how could I say no to this money? Originally, I wanted to be a preschool teacher. And just oh, really? looking at the numbers, I was like, oh my God, I'm never even going to be able to pay off my student debt. Here is an option that I love to do. I love to be face to face with clients and meet all these people and like I can make really good money doing it. So why not? Yeah. And does she teach you? Yeah. Right. That's nice yeah. too. So you like had that in. Yeah. Because totally. um yeah, she did lashes for a long time. So obviously she still does. Trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she does. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. No, that's cool. So now where are you like kind of at with lashes? Okay, so I <clears throat> work in a salon in Salem, Oregon. Um, I love it. I've been there my entire lash career, which is crazy we're in a really nice location it's huge our space is 4400 square feet so literally giant it's fun but I definitely want to like transition into more of like online education Mm -hmm. and podcasting so that's what I'm trying to pivot to I love to travel and so I'm definitely trying to figure out ways that I can travel and still make money yeah Yeah. because how often are you taking clients now Five days a week. <laughs> too much. I know. I'm way too much. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, oh, what? And yeah, you're, you've been so doing bad. lashes probably like a year. What, how old were you when you started? I was 20. 20. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you're like a year. You started like a year before me. So you're like going on 10 years then, yeah. right? Of doing, a long time. That's a long time. And you're. I don't even know how you're still taking clients <laughs> five days no. a week. There are some days where I'm like, I am just so burnt. Like, what am I doing? But at the same time, I'm like, the money. I know. Like the money really gets you sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I still love it. Like, I love my clients I build relationships with. But mm-hmm. I've done that too, where I had my set clients, then I'll have an opening and then I'll be, I'll like open it up to a new client. And every time they're the worst client ever. And I'm like, this is why I'm just happy with my clients I have. I can't take anymore. I feel like that's always like a little. I don't know. The universe is telling you, like, stop it. For sure. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll, like, add in, like, part of a Saturday or part of a Sunday. And every single time, I'll get a new person, and they will no-show me. And I'm like, this is what I get for working a day I shouldn't be. Like, That's true. Don't do it. And we take card on file, but, I mean, still, they just cancel their card, and their card gets declined, which is so fun. But That's, I'm like, why? Oh why do gosh. I do this? That is so, I hate that. That's so annoying. Um, so you were obviously with, uh, in your past relationship when you started everything and really got into lashes and you were 19 or 18 or 19 when you guys started dating. Yeah, I yeah. was 18 when we started yeah. dating. So I know we have kind of similar stories with feeling like in those relationships, cause I had started dating my past partner when I was 20, I think it was 2021. And 
it can be really difficult when you're with somebody, especially when you're young and you're kind of learning and growing, but then when you do feel like you're held back. So what, do you like how many examples that you want to share of just kind of when you kind of noticed that started happening or how it felt? Yeah. I mean, it really started when I started to build my career because very quickly I started making more money than he was Mm -hmm. and he kind of was in a set salary. So it was like, Either he goes off on his own or he keeps making the same amount of money. Maybe it's like a dollar raise in that or like right. every year. But I mean, what's that? Nothing. Yeah. So then it became like, we were going to buy another house. And then it was like, I'm paying for everything. Mm-hmm. And I want to do all these fun things, but I'm paying for it all. And right. not only am I paying for myself, I'm paying for the second person. So very quickly, I was like, oh my God, this is not fun here I wanted to build a life with someone and like be able to have all these things to show and it's like working my fucking ass off and yeah I mean it's all me and so like I just felt so much pressure on myself you know if I don't work all this amount of time then we can't do this or like we can't have this and it's hard did he ever make you feel guilty or anything? Oh, 100%. Or like of making more money? Yeah, 100%. And, it yeah. was always like he just was so negative about it. Mm. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, you're not negative when you're spending my money. Mm. And he would complain about our house like 24-7. Okay, we lived in a nice neighborhood. We had a beautiful house. We killed it when we sold it. We made double what we put into it. Wow. So that was huge. And it was always just so negative, like, I want to move, I want to do this. And never once were, was it like, I'm so thankful for this house that we bought, and we made this great decision, and it was just... And you guys were together for about 10 years, yeah. right? So, yeah. like, how long was it from when you started to when you were like, oh, I'm making really good money, and I'm building this career, and so, it started taking off? just over two years into my lashing career, mm. we decided we were going to move from Albany to Salem, and then we were going to buy and whenever everything was going smoothly we bought the house and then it was just slowly downhill like all of a sudden I realized it's all me and so I mean that's been a long time that's seven years of kind of being unhappy and feeling it was all up to me so did you guys have any conversations no he was the type of person who like if you tried to talk about it it was just shutting down Mm. and I felt like every time I went to ask for help it was like, well, you make more money, so mm. you can take care of it. It was just all on me, which, uh, yeah, nobody wants that, especially like in a partnership. And even, I mean, okay, obviously, like there's most likely always going to be someone that makes more money, or yeah. you know. And I think when you get kids and stuff involved, and you have your lifestyle, but you kind of figure those things out where it's like, okay, I don't know that there's like a mutual respect. For each other and I always had the mindset too like when I started making more money than my ex-partner that for me I was like this is for us right and then when there were certain things that I had helped pay for for him to like go back to school for me it was always like this is like an investment into us and our future and I never saw it as like this power dynamic thing but obviously he did because for me too I'm like well if we have kids and we have this thing like especially right. owning your own business you don't get paid time off or anything like maternity leave so right. I'm like you're gonna have to I'm gonna need your help if we're gonna yeah. continue this so I was like although things are never gonna be like 50 50 all the time to me I was like but it's an investment in us and it's growing your career and everything and yeah it was really hard when that kind of things would be like thrown back into your face or they make you feel bad about it I think that my breaking point was definitely COVID when we got shut down. Really? Because for 59 days, I had no income. And it was Mm kind of like the tables are turned. I need your help to pay for things. And, like, I can cover quite a bit. But I don't don't know when I'm going back to work. So I don't know what to plan for. And that was kind of like deer in headlights. And then it was like, well you know, let's just extend our mortgage a couple more months, add those payments to the end instead of being like, oh, let me help pay for these things. This, yeah. And so then it was just like so much more stress. And we came back from COVID after 59 days. And I was like, I am literally going to work every single minute that I can work and paid three months of our mortgage in one week. I was like, this is crazy. But I was like, I literally have no other choice. Just like, because you wanted to like not push it back. And and I just realized like I literally cannot rely on you for anything. Yeah. And I felt so much guilt just asking for help that one time. Like this is not how it should be. I want to have a partner where 
I know will help me if something comes up. I want to have kids. So just yeah. like you said, I want to be able to take times off with our kids and not have to worry about bills. So Yeah. No, that's really interesting because I think my breaking point was also during COVID too. It was a very similar thing. And I don't know about you, but I was able to get the unemployment stuff. So there was some money coming in. Were you yeah. able to get like... We did it until like six months after we got that. Oh, shit. And even then it was like... It's like, not. I mean, it's not compared to what you're making. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's how it was for me. I was like, I was getting a little bit. So it kind of helped cover my personal like bills and stuff. Right. And like, I think I could still pay my half of rent. And, you know, that was something where I was like, you know, this is your time to shine, buddy, because yeah. it was always like, Oh, I feel bad that you do this. And like, right. you know, you've helped me with all these things. And this is the time where it's like, now I need you. And the, the sh- like the shame about that was really crazy. Well, and one thing that was crazy for us is like, I was still every day I was going to work and like trying to hustle in different ways. Like, mm-hmm selling things we had to sell in the salon and just like constantly pivoting. Like we started making masks and customizing masks oh, for I businesses. That. Yeah. I was working like 12 hours a day just to like pay for what I could. Yeah. And he would get mad that I wasn't at home. I'm like, okay, you expect me to be not working and just sitting at home. I didn't have the option to reorganize my closet like every other right. person on Facebook. <laughs> like I was seriously trying to hustle so yeah. that I could pay my bills. So I forgot about that. I remember when you guys were like doing the custom mask and yeah. stuff. And you it have like crazy. boutique type yeah. in your the salon too, right? Yeah. So there's clothes and yeah. little accessories. I mean that's really hard to be in a relationship like that. What do you feel like looking back was what are your biggest lessons that you've learned from that? I definitely felt stuck for a long time so part of that was I was just afraid you know we don't own a house together we own cars together we were basically going to get divorced we weren't married but we had to sell those things we had to split those assets we had a dog and I was like oh my god okay I know this is going to be hard that and he just did not take it well really so when I finally was like you know what I'm done like I had been done for years but Mm -hmm. finally I was like I physically cannot do this anymore. And every night I would come home and he'd be like, well, why? Why? I don't Mm. understand why. So I had the same conversation over and over again. And it was the hardest, like, six months of my life trying to deal with all this. I mean, I had to pack up all my stuff. I was trying to find somewhere to live. I still have my stuff in three different places right now. And I'm like, I don't. I don't know where this is. I don't know whose house it is at right now, but yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. I mean, putting your house up for sale is already so much emotion. And then to be like, we're leaving. What are you taking? What am I taking? Yeah. And then it was a mess. It's literally, like you said, it's like a divorce, (laughs) except you don't have to do like the court paperwork for, you know, that separating that. That is so hard, especially when you have pets too. I thankfully knew pretty early on that, well, I know they knew pretty early on, but like right away I was like, these dogs are mine. Right. So I didn't ever (laughs) ask him to pay for any vet bills or pay for food because I was like, if the day ever happens, then, you know, I'm going to. They're my dogs. I don't have any say. (laughs) Right. I mean, that was definitely hard with me because she was mine. Like I paid Mm. for absolutely everything. She was my dog. But he was not emotionally stable so I knew that like he needed her for his sanity so that was hard for me because I'm like I feel like I'm giving her to you and you're not going to take as good of care of her and all these things but at the same time like you two need each other right now yeah how did you get to the point of like I mean obviously there was COVID and everything that had happened that kind of probably showed the true colors of the other side of things but how did you work within yourself to be like I deserve better because I think and not that like he's a bad person right I think everybody has their people and maybe just want to match but it's like when did you get to that point where you're like I have to stop settling because I know for me it was really scary of like you're comfortable with somebody especially when you're with them for so long and I was with my ex for like six six seven years and you have that like friendship part of course especially when you start dating young and then you're really comfortable you kind of have your lifestyle you're used to each other you have your families integrated and everything like what was kind of did you like do like did you go to therapy did you have sort friends of. like did you, yeah like what so, kind of got you that point you're like okay I have to let this go and be done right so um during COVID one of my things was I am going to work out every single day mm. 
So oh, that's right. I, I remember you myself. went into that. You did the 75 yeah. hard. So I started out just working out every day. And then I was like, you know, what? I'm going to do this thing called 75 hard. Because one of my friends, who is my current boyfriend now, was like, let's do this crazy thing. And it was madness. Yeah. Even now, I'm like, how do we do this? I don't even know. It's so much. But that got my mind just on a whole nother level. I had 45 minutes of my day every day where I was just walking outside by myself. When you are doing that and it's quiet or you're listening to a podcast, you reflect on your life so much. And it was like, I have all this potential. And one of the things in 75 Hard was like visualizing you for your future. Mm -hmm. And every night I would do that. And I realized what I'm visualizing has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. He's not there. He's not in the house that I'm visualizing. He's not driving any of the cars that I'm visualizing. Something is happening here, but in my heart, I just knew I'm meant for more. And yeah, it. and that's hard when it's like kind of be okay with like the growth apart. Because I think it's hard when you start dating somebody so young. It's like totally. you're either going to grow together, or you're going to grow apart. I really just feel like there's no in between personally. And I think like as women being in entrepreneurs and wanting to build businesses and everything. And if somebody doesn't align with a lot of that, it can be really hard. And I think in general, women are kind of taught, don't talk about money. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you should be grateful for what you have and to kind of be small. And that was something for me where if I did talk about money, I was like, Oh my gosh, I had like this amazing day today. Like I made this much money or this month I made this much. It was kind of supportive if we were around people but, but then, like, angry. but behind closed doors, it was like, why do you have to do that? Yeah. Like, why do you have to talk about that? Yeah. It's like, because I'm proud of myself right. and we should talk about money. And right. we would hang out with a lot of people that were also flash artists and stuff. And he'd be like, why do you always, always have to talk about business? I'm like, because I'm passionate about it. It's and I love fun. it. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I got to a point where anytime I was working outside of actually doing clients, like if I'm at home and I'm doing some kind of marketing design or anything, he would get mad. Yeah. And he would rather me sit on the couch and watch TV with him than work. And it's like, I don't watch TV. I never watch TV. That's just something. Really? I do. I watch so much. Probably too much TV. Oh, no. I'm I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm going to read a book. Yeah. Like something like that. Mm -hmm. But I will sit with you while you watch TV, but I'm going to do my own thing. If you want me there, just physically, I will be there. I will be working on my computer. I'll be doing whatever. I will have a conversation with you if you want to talk with me, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to waste my time watching TV. Yeah. And so then it got to a point where I was like, I didn't want to be home because I can't work on what I need to work on. I just felt so stuck. I have all of these visions of what I'm, I want my career to be, but I physically just felt like I couldn't do any of that to get there. So what were like the steps of breaking it? Like you did the 75 hard and you're obviously like visualizing every day and you're realizing now, like, I don't see him in this future. What were kind of the next steps of moving out of that relationship for you? I mean, like once finally, I was like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Every night we had the same conversation. And then he just wasn't listening. I'm like, how many times can I tell you? I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like, I have told you so many times what I was struggling with and you didn't want to change anything. And like now all of a sudden you want to fix things. Like the time to have fixed it is way gone. Yeah. But I, I don't know. At that point I called my best friend who's a realtor. I was like, I want you to come over tomorrow night. I want you to bring papers for us to sign to sell the house. And I think it really didn't hit him until she showed up with the papers Mm. and was like, this is what you need to do before you sell. This is the listing price I'm thinking. This is everything I want out of the house to stage it. Mm. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, like you are leaving. Did he want to keep the house or was it just kind of the thing where it's like, I mean, he hated the house. Oh, that's right. So I don't think <laughs> I forgot. <so. laughs> but then he did this weird thing where I would come home and it would be like another piece of our furniture was sold and gone. And he would keep all the money from it, which was also really weird. I came home one night, our couch, our love seat, our chair, our coffee table, all of the lights in the living room were all gone. Ooh. And I was like, what? he's literally sitting in a lawn chair in the living room. <laughs> he sold it. And I was like, did you forget that I paid for most of that? And he's yeah. like, I don't remember that. Uh. Oh, okay. I, I pay for most of the house, but I'm not going to keep most of the money we're getting from the house. Like, right. What, what was happening here? So 
oh my gosh, you it just was crazy. And there's like it no furniture. And it got like, to the okay. point where I would stay out until I was ready to go to bed because I'm like, I don't yeah. even know how to see what's missing in my house. It was oh my nuts. Gosh. It was literally nuts. That's crazy. I think it's so hard because I just feel like I don't know. Like, have you have you even had it with like friendships and stuff that have kind of gone away because of your drive or you know just your lifestyle? Yes, but definitely like not as sudden yeah, as, as I mean they like slowly will drift out mm-hmm. but I also have a couple of people in my life who are super business oriented have yeah. huge goals and I feel like I've just gotten kind of closer to them yeah which is awesome yeah but yeah there's been a few that have kind of trickle out no I felt that as well I actually feel like the past few years it's been a really big sh- honestly since breaking up with my ex and stuff and going through all that that it's kind of seemed to continue with friendships too where it's yeah. like you know it's it's just so hard when you start the friendships young and it's not that I'm saying that like when you have your own business you can only be friends with people that are also entrepreneurs or have their own businesses but it is different like the conversations are different and you do you always want to surround yourself with people that are better than you and that can be hard and it's you know it's hard for me I started really taking inventory on like after I hung out with somebody, like, did I feel like fulfilled and happy and maybe like driven or inspired or did I feel drained as fuck? Yeah. And most of the time with a lot of the people, it was like, I was drained as fuck or it was like the only things that they wanted to do is go out and party, which like, I love doing that. But then I'm like, why don't we do something that doesn't involve alcohol? Especially like for me, I've been pretty open about just my kind of like struggles with alcohol and stuff and it being like a big part of my life and I think it's just hard to get to that point where you're like and be okay with like transitioning out of those friendships right so I think part of my thing was I was never really a huge drinker anyways mm-hmm. and I was just always working I mean like you, yeah you no know, I work all the time I I mean like I applaud you for your hustle because I'm just like damn I sometimes <laughs> I don't um but I just feel like even with my clients I'm definitely more attracted to the older clients Same. because I can relate so much more. Let's talk about business. Let's talk about your goals. I want to hear about your kids and how you raise your kids and all these things. So very quickly, I realized, as you can see, I don't go back to our hometown because yeah, I don't have anything in common with any of those it's people. So true. Yeah. I, like I left yeah. for a reason mm-hmm. and I just, I, mm-hmm. I don't know, I guess I skipped that stage in my life. So I am all about having business relationships and I love my friends that I can talk business about same and my boyfriend has a huge clientele that are all amazing entrepreneurs so I want to go to have dinner with them and pick their brain and learn anything I can learn from them yeah I'm all about you know tell me your story tell me how you got there Mm -hmm. anything I can learn to better myself I want to know so yeah I just felt like I kind of weeded out those unhealthy relationships yeah. pretty early on with friendships that's good for anybody listening we grew up in a very small town and it's not that there's like only bad people there but people aren't they're very not motivated they're not motivated it's a very small picture outlook on life and there's not a lot of like want for like self-development or anything like that I mean there's the few people there but that's something too like whenever I go back because all my family is still there so I obviously go back and visit a lot but that's something too honestly like I'm not really friends with a lot of people from high school you're probably one of the people I talk to the most right and we haven't seen each other in 11 years right right? so it's like but because you are also really business mindset like personal development mindset and everything and that is what I appreciate so much about. And I think why we've stayed connected for you know sure. these past years, but it's kind of sad, you know, because there's some people that I was like super close with in high school that like I haven't even spoken to in years. Same. And it's just weird because you're like, I spent this huge chunk of my life where like we were talking Especially all the time. Us, I mean, we went to school with these people. They were in our classes growing yeah. up for 12 years. And all yeah. of a sudden it's like, Oh, I haven't seen you. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like, if you didn't grow up in a small town and you're listening, you might be like, I freaking, like, you, we knew everybody. Like, yeah. you know everybody in your school. I yeah. think in our class, there was, like, we had 66 people graduate in our class. I think something. we graduated with less than that. I swear it was, like, the last couple of weeks we had so many drop out. Drop out. Like over 40. Yeah, nothing. it was small. So, like, you knew everybody. And a yeah. lot of us went to school from preschool to you know, senior right. year. Yeah. So it's just, it's crazy. So you have these really deep relationships and friendships with your group that you had. And I think that was something that when I moved that I kind of already started like disconnecting those 
mm -hmm. um, relationships just because it's just hard, you know, to continue to grow. And especially when you get into like your own business and stuff, but then getting into like a relationship that was very, not that it was all bad, but just that also the, the action wasn't behind what was being said. For sure. All the time. It's funny because I've never really, I've never really talked about my past relationship on the podcast. <laughs> the one time. The one time I did, it was probably maybe a year and a half or two years ago. And I just kind of like went off social media. I just kind of like ghosted everything for a little bit. And I came back and I recorded an episode and I was just kind of saying like, oh, like going through some hard things with the relationship, whatever. <laughs> the day after I posted it, he fucking left me a one star review on oh my podcast. Oh my God. And he wrote pretty mundane. And I was like, you piece of shit. Like wow. the what okay, I'm like, obviously you're listening. So yeah. like why are you still tuning in? We're broken up, right? Because right. I think at that time he'd broken up with me. We were we it got very toxic towards the end. <laughs> but so it's funny because for a little bit we got back together and I made him change the review. And I was like, you fucking changed it. I was like, that's the only one star review I have. I was like, you changed that. And he did. And he was like, great listen or something dumb. But now I'm like, I wonder, well, no, if he listens now, because I'm sure I'll get a one star review For again sure. that is being talked about. I know. I'm like, my ex is blocked on all my social media right now because things just weren't going well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know he's going to find this episode. Oh, shit. Listen to it. And I'm going to get some kind of backlash from it, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because we're from a small world, a small town. His his mom, his mom's husband are, is like best friends with my dad. Yeah. So there's that too. So yeah. I'm sure if you get any, I'll hear about it. Oh, as yeah, well. For sure. For sure. But you know what? I think it should be normalized to talk about like, your experience, right? Yeah. And obviously, like, we're all young and we have these relationships and we learn and we grow. And that can kind of take us into your new relationship that you're in where you're like, it's amazing. Like right. they're so like you guys were friends before you started dating. Yeah. How, when did that kind of transition into like actually dating and my yeah. boyfriend now? Or yeah. Like, your boyfriend uh, now. Um, we were friends for like a good couple of years mm -hmm. and then like his life kind of fell apart and my life kind of fell apart. And then we were still, you know, friends so much. And then it was all of a sudden like, why don't we just date? Mm. I mean, we're, we already spend so much time together. We get along together. We have the same kind of goals. We should date. And it's Ew. been amazing so far. And he is just the complete opposite of my ex. He has a business. He does hair. So he's oh. sort of in the same industry as us. Right. And it's just been crazy. Like, we want to do all of this education stuff together. And Very I just cool. don't even know how to explain it. I feel like... I'm living a fairy tale right now. Just Aww. But that's amazing. cute because I do feel like I was saying earlier where it's, it's really hard to feel stuck and feel like, I don't know if, about you, but for me, I kind of always felt a little gaslit of like, and it was probably me doing it to myself also, but also my ex-partner of like, I do this for you. And there were good qualities to our relationship. And I think I'll always have a place in my heart, like a soft spot in my heart for him. And yeah, that I, that I learned and I grew so much from that relationship, sure. but that knowing when it was time to move on from yeah. it and just realizing like, you don't have to settle, I guess. And that was something that was really hard for me to, because I think I always just thought of like the, well, what if I don't, we, it's so dumb. Cause we all think of this or it's yeah. like, I'm not going to find anybody. <laughs> like my heart you know, thing was too like. If I leave right now, you know, I'm 29 now. We're on a time crunch of when we can have kids. Right. I feel like more and more it's coming out. You have to have kids longer. You need to harvest your eggs sooner. Right. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to not only find someone, but actually like them enough to have children. I am running out of time. And then you're like, you probably date for like at least a year. Yeah, before so you then it's like, this whole time do away. I just stay? Do I yeah. just stay and have kids? And then maybe we divorce and then I find someone else like I didn't know that was hard and that is really hard now yeah. I'm like okay I'll figure it out mm -hmm. I mean there are also different ways of having children now and True. things you can do to make your odds better so I'm like I'm yeah it makes me happy and if it happens it happens I think for me like I don't know for sure if I want kids. I've never had this like big drive of this motherly instinct. I like if I had to have kids by myself, I probably wouldn't. I, you know, I'm just, I'd be like, I'd be fine being single and yeah. not having kids. Yeah. I'll just have dogs. But I think something for me too, when I realized that that relationship wasn't going to work out anymore was because I couldn't imagine us having a child together and not like 
it being a partnership, it not being like, I felt like it was going to be a lot on me and Mm -hmm. I would be actually giving up a lot, which I think, of course, when you like start a family, like your life is going to change. Right. But I just felt like I would be giving up a very big part, probably my entire personality and like who I am, just because I just didn't feel like that the support was going to be there. And we didn't align on like a lot of things. Like I personally was like, I don't want to be a stay at home mom. Like I always want to like work and like shout out to the stay at home moms because I that's like 10 jobs in itself. Right. Um, and you deserve so much more respect than what you get. Sure. But I think that was something for me too, where I was like, I can't imagine having kids like with this person right, right now. And as you get older too, it's like, uh, I probably should, I probably should feel bad if, if, totally. if I, cause I think if I met the right person and they also wanted kids, I'd be like, yeah, you know? So that was something crazy that happened with me. Like I, for my entire life, have wanted kids Mm -hmm. and that was always something important to me. And then it was like all of a sudden with COVID, then my ex all of a sudden said, I don't want to bring kids into this world. So that was like another breaking thing. You're like, shit. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like I didn't sign up for that. And same thing. Like it got to a point where I was like, I can't do this by myself. Yeah. I can't raise these kids by myself. And now I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like, I understand what it's like to have a partner. I don't feel like I'm going to be doing this alone. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, well, I don't know. Maybe I could eventually be a stay-at-home mom. Because we want to do all of these other streams of income, of course I would still be working, but more of not be behind the chair as often and things like that. And I just feel so much weight off of my chest now that I can do these things. Yeah. That's really, like, nice to hear, honestly, because, like, we kind of talked before, I'm like, it's cool to see that you're in this really healthy relationship now and with somebody that supports you and, like, celebrates your fucking drive and your ability to, like, want to be successful instead of diminishes it. And it's so nice to come home from work and have a crazy day. And, like, I just had one. We just went to California and then came back. And I had 10 clients the day that we came back. Shut. And one I was like. In a day? What am I doing? 10 (laughs) clients in a day. And our flight got delayed. So we were supposed to be home at like 11.30. We got home at 1.30. It was awful. But I just remember coming home and he didn't work as late as I did that day. And he was like, let's go to dinner. I know you're tired. Let's not cook. Let's do these things. And then it's always like. Let's celebrate. I mean, you had an amazing day. Let's have a drink and celebrate. Yeah. Or, you know, he did five hair clients in a day. Like, that was an awesome day. Let's celebrate and do something. Mm. It's just so much nicer to be able to be excited about being proud of myself and being proud of him and have him being proud of me. Like, yeah, this is huge. I've never been in a relationship like this. And it's great. I'm so happy for you. Same. That's really cool. And like I said, it gives me hope because um, there's one out out there for you, I promise. I've been on some crazy dates lately and it makes me be like, what the fuck? Maybe I'll just be single forever. (laughs) I mean, at least you have your dogs if you are single. (laughs) That's true. No, you guys, okay. Literally every day I wake up and I'm like, I am so thankful that I met him, that I knew him, and that I did not have to date because I'm Mm -hmm. terrified from everyone's dating experiences. Like when you post the guys that you match up with, I'm like, oh my (laughs) god, I cannot imagine. Yeah, I get the crazy like hinge like where people, I always, I have like my close friends on my personal account where I always have posted the screenshots of like the weird responses that people put and yeah, it's wild out there. And I think what's hard for me with like dating too, one, I never put like lash artists or anything on my page because I feel like people automatically are just like, what's that? Or it's just like, I don't know. And it's just like, anytime I've gone on a date and they're like, oh, what do you do? And I start talking about it. It's like instantly, like you can just like, it seems like the value, like they just think like, oh, cute. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, actually like, do you want to talk numbers? Like, do we need, you know, it's just like, there's something with like being in the beauty industry that majority of men that I've dated think it's like a cute hobby or Even something women I mean I get clients that can be so rude and then they find out how much money you make and then it's like they're offended yeah that you have no education and that you're making more money than that right and it's like well excuse me mm-hmm. one I do have an education like I have a license in this state right you're like I had to get certified and to get also like I have invested so much time I mean 
both of us have learned so much in our careers. Mm -hmm. It's not like we just learned one day and then kept going. I mean, we, we've been hustling. We've been pivoting on all the education. And so, yeah. Yeah. I hate it when I have clients that are like, oh. <laughs> I know it's just hard. I think it's just hard in our industry. And I think a lot of people go through it, whether, like I said, it's your parents, it's significant others, it's friendships. Because I even remember when I dropped out of college and I was like, I'm going to go to esthetician school. Yeah. It was very like, why? Right. Or like, but what, what next? Like what's right. your long term plan? I'm right. like, this is my plan right now. Like I've always been someone, and I think you have two words. Like you have kind of that entrepreneur spirit. For sure. Um, and I always feel like I remember in high school too, you were always like taking the lead and you were like very organized, mm -hmm. and, like your very type A personality well, of like I mean, getting shit done. I've been, I've had a job since I was nine. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot remember a day where I have not worked in my life and yeah. I love it. I love to come to work. I love to share my story. I love to hustle. As much as I hated COVID because we weren't making money, that just fueled my fire. I was hustling every day. I was having to pivot. I was following the trends. Like I love that stuff. Yeah. So you can tell that stuff fires you up. It's like a 100%. challenge. I feel like you've always been like that. Like you'll take a challenge yeah. on. You're like, fuck yeah, give me the challenge. I have a friend and we'll travel together and we'll just come up with these crazy business ideas. Mm -hmm. And I swear it's like, oh, we would joke that we were going to come back with a new business. And one time I can remember we were going to California and we were driving. And in the midst of us driving this 10 hour trip, we decided we were going to open like a wedding well, it was, like, things you could do for your wedding, like, um, a champagne wall or, like, mm -hmm. when backdrops were super cool, like, the grass walls, mm -hmm. like, all these different things that you don't see in weddings or, like, super expensive, we were going to rent them out. And it's that just how Some people could just rent. That wedding. is literally, like, my favorite thing ever is, like, yeah. let's just brainstorm an entire business mm -hmm. and then just not do it. Right. <laughs> just because we don't like, have the time. Just put it in the back for later. But it's like, like, put it in the archives. We always joke. I'm like, we should create all these businesses and then just sell them. But right. of course, we don't have time. Right. But I just love, like, give me an idea and I will mm -hmm. come up with a business for you. And I'll give you all these crazy mm -hmm. ideas of what you can do and how you can sell and how you can market. That's I can't so imagine cool. doing like a nine to five job where I do the same thing every day. Oh. Yeah. No, me neither. I couldn't. I couldn't. I want to travel with you. That sounds so fun. It is like, fun. like <laughs> sometimes, like when I first started dating my boyfriend, I was like, okay, I need to warn you. Like my mind goes crazy when we travel. The second mm. that we hit airport carpet, my ideas are going crazy. So I'll yeah. travel with like a notebook. I'll be writing things down. I'll be like, oh, if we lived in this state, I could work here or we could do this. Or what if we moved here? And it's just so funny. I, you know, oh, that always right? happens to me too. And it's something I think getting out of your regular routine and like putting yourself into a different environment. Yeah. Because I feel like whenever I'm on vacation or I'm just somewhere different, my creative juices just get freaking flowing. Yes. And yeah, it's just so funny because that happens to me too, where I'm just like, you're supposed to be on vacation and like taking a break. But I do the same where I'm like taking notes. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea yeah. for a podcast episode. Right. Or, like, or I'm like, hey, did you see that last shooting over there? Like, did you see what they were doing? Like, mm -hmm. I love that setup. We should like incorporate yeah. that setup. What can we do? I just, yeah, just pull inspiration. Yeah. But, and I think a lot of people, a lot of girls that I talk to, especially with coaching and they're like, I feel stuck. I feel like I, my creative juices aren't like, I'm just feel like I'm in a rut and I'm like, what are you doing that's different? Like getting you outside right. of your regular routine because we're doing the same thing. Even if it's simple as like you go on a walk every day, take a different direction to go on the walk than your normal path. Like switch yeah. things up. And, you know, and a lot of the times they're just in the same routine. Like you have to go out and experience stuff or they're just working, going home, right. taking care of their kids or, you know, whatever it is, doing the house chores and taking care of things. I think we get so wrapped up in that. that it's like you actually have to go out and like experience things for sure to be able to sometimes bring that that inspiration and that like creativeness to life so one of our things when we we're trying to like come up with a big project is we'll leave either you know we'll fly somewhere we'll drive somewhere we'll go to the coast i'll pretend i don't know anybody we'll, like, wear a hat <laughs> if we go to lincoln city <laughs> yeah um, i do that too at the grocery store i'm like that nobody knows my car right now so mm. i feel like i'm kind of incognito there. yeah but um, we'll go to Portland. We'll just sit in a restaurant at, like, weird hours of the day, like, 2 to 4. That way we don't feel bad for taking a table. Yeah. And we'll order food, of course, but we'll just lay all of our stuff out. And then our minds just go crazy. And it's it's insane. Like, if we were at home, at work, whatever, 
you just get distracted by all these things that you should be doing that you need to clean. You should go clean out the fridge, things like that. I don't have time to brainstorm as much as I wish I did. So true. And then you put me in somewhere where I have no idea where I am. I don't know these people. There's so many noises. My brain just goes crazy. It's so true. That's why I always go to coffee shops. Yep. For like sure. I do coffee shops and I'll do work because I have a whole desk set up at my house, which is nice because I do need to just like sometimes yeah. nice to be able to just work from home or sometimes I'll do podcast recordings from home. But most of the times I'm like, I need to go to a coffee shop and mm-hmm. do, I get so much more done. So I think it's just getting out of your, your regular routine that you have and just switching things up. Yeah. It, it makes a huge difference. Like number crunching in like photo stuff I can do at home. Mm-hmm. That doesn't bother me. But anything where my brain needs to be creative, get me out. Yeah. Take me somewhere I don't know. Put me in a car. Yeah. Anything. That's just it makes me think of um authors like we'll do like writers retreats or yeah. they like go and they book a yes. they go somewhere and they stay, they rent a house for like a month. A month, yeah. And, and they, they like write a write book. A book. Yeah. And I'm just like that's literally what I think we need to do. Like yeah. For any type of business owner where you almost need, even if it's a night where you're like, I'm going to go do like a little staycation and I'm going to just work for a few hours, then maybe go to dinner and like whatever. But yeah, because I've done that a couple of times and I just, it's every time I'm like, I need to do that more often because it makes a huge difference. So there was this trip that I had planned before my ex and I broke up and it was like right before we were breaking up. I actually canceled this because it was kind of advertised as like camping but you had like a tiny house and it didn't tell you the location you were going to it was like it's an hour outside of Portland and then once you book it you get the address and all the information and there's no cell phone service like you're totally (laughs) off grid which sounds amazing to me and to Mm -hmm. my soul and then I realized I was going to be stuck with my ex (laughs) and I was like oh my god right what am I doing with my life like this is going to be awful that's pretty sad if you're like I, but I, I don't like, want to spend time with you, especially yeah. if there's no Wi-Fi. Yeah, I was like, okay, I, I really need to take this trip for real because mm-hmm. for myself, I just feel like that would be so beneficial as mm-hmm. long as you're with someone who is also like that. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm like, that does sound pretty nice to be able to disconnect. Yeah. But, yeah that is... It literally had a box that you could put your cell phone in if you didn't want to be on your cell phone at all, which is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you have to tell me where that's at. And there was, like, a kitchenette, so you'd bring all your own food. So I love that, like, Cute. camping, but you still but have like, shelter. It's, like, glamping. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. Cool. That's just, really cool. like, getting away from the world. No, I think anyone listening, if you haven't taken, like, a night away or even just go for a do few it. hours, go do some, you know. And it's funny because I told myself when I went to Maui for two weeks in January, I was like, okay, one week in a month, I'm doing like a staycation, like going, you know, whatever. And honestly, I haven't done it every month mm-hmm. like I should have. And it's making me be like, all right, it's inspiring me that I need to book something because it is hard to get busy yeah. and stuff. And you no, know, but I definitely think everyone needs to make that a priority in I used in to take life. mental health days and I would purposely book it during the week, like mm-hmm. a Tuesday or a Wednesday where I knew normal people were working. Yeah. And I would go stay the night in Portland or do something and then all day, just kind of like check out, not go on social media, eat whatever the hell I wanted to eat, just do whatever I felt like doing to make myself feel better. And that really changed things for me too. That's amazing. Yeah. Did you start doing that stuff? Once you started kind of getting into your workout routine, uh-huh. you felt like that all kind of uh-huh. changed your mindset. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Are, are you still pretty active at the gym? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We've taken a little bit of break. My boyfriend's going through some health stuff that we're mm-hmm. trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's made a big difference in my life too. And it's not even like uh, you know, I've talked a little bit about that. I, you know, in October or no, it was like beginning of November, I started kind of just like really taking my fitness and my health serious and I have lost weight and it wasn't even really necessarily, it was to do that, but it's kind of like a byproduct more. Cause I feel like the way that my mind has changed, it has been it's so much insane. more beneficial too. Yeah. Well, and people always complain that they don't have time to work out, but it's like when you're working out, your brain is so much more active. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sleep as much. You have so much energy to do things. When I was doing 75 hard, I would go to bed at 10 in the morning or 10 at night (laughs) and then wake up at four in the morning. And like, I would be good. I would work out in the morning. I would work out at night. I would have all this time to do all of these things. And now I'm just like, oh, where did that time come from? But like you, you make it happen. And Mm -hmm. theoretically, I had so much more that I was doing then. And I felt great about it yeah I think that's something for me that I would make that excuse for a long time and I don't want to like trigger anybody with like weight loss or anything like that because I just gen I genuinely think that no matter where you are and you don't have to add physical activity because you 
want to lose weight or you need to lose weight. But I just think one, just even going for a walk every day and stuff like that, it did make me think having that, like you said, that 45 yeah. minutes to yourself where you're just, just reflecting. Reflect. Yep. And like, even at the gym now, especially where I'm on the treadmill, I am constantly like writing ideas and stuff because yeah. they just like come to me. It's just, it's just weird. So I think even just for that, your mental health, if not for anything else, just to bring that into your life. And just finding your safe space. I mean, yeah. my safe space has definitely always been my car. Mm. So it's like I would get home when I was sitting in the driveway yeah, for yeah, 20, 20 25 time. minutes yeah. just because that was my time to answer anyone's texts that I didn't get back to, mm-hmm. catch up on my social media if I wanted to, pay bills if I needed to. Before I walked into like whatever craziness I had waiting for me at home, yeah. All your I had that time. Out. Yes. <laughs> I had that time to just like check out and do me. And yeah. that's huge. Yeah. That is huge. What were some green flags or that you saw like with your new relationship? I mean, I think it's really cute. The whole, you know, like, oh, you had a long day. So like, let's just not even worry. Like, I got you. Let's go to dinner. But have there been anything else that you've kind of maybe didn't even realize until it happened? And you're like, oh, that's different. But you were so used to like Um, it happening the opposite way, you know? So one thing for sure that I still struggle with every day just because I'm not used to it is he's definitely the man. Mm. And in my last relationship, I was the man. Mm. So, like, I was having to take care of everything and pay for everything. And now I'm like, wait, you're going to do that for me? So you're, like, having to kind of, like, tap into your feminine energy yes, a little bit which more is than hard you were for before. Me, but then at the same time, I'm like, okay. Like, I understand why people like this. There are some times, though, where I drive him crazy because I'm like, just let me help you. I can help you. And he just isn't used to that either. Mm. So, like, he'll will butt heads because I want to physically help mm-hmm. and he's like no I'm the man I can mm-hmm. do this so it's like there's a couple of things where we need to work out still but yeah that's definitely one of them green flag is definitely like the positivity just yeah. every day celebrating your wins our mindsets are very much alike so that's been big healthy eating we're both big into we both love to travel we love to work out. We love to be outside. During the summer, we love to like ride our bikes. And mm-hmm. he has a motorcycle. We love to ride his motorcycle. Just like doing things together. But we don't always have to talk. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. I love that we have this green flag of being able to be together, but not necessarily talk the whole time. Yeah. And it just being great. Yeah. And that's huge. He's also very clean, which oh, I appreciate. <laughs> that's always a plus I feel like I don't have to be the parent I definitely yeah. don't like the parent in our Same. last relationship so that was hard I know what you mean because I feel like in my past relationship and I feel like in general I'm in like a masculine energy a lot yeah. and I feel like you probably are as well yeah. that it's you're just hard like switch it's super hard mm-hmm. and so I have a hard time with that too just with dating as well I'm like no I'll fucking pay for my own shit like and I, I part of that is because that's trauma from us realizing we didn't have that before so we didn't want to rely on anyone else yeah and now realizing I have someone that's gonna help me it's and like, like being vulnerable are you sure yeah are you sure you want to pay for my dinner yeah I can do it it's fine and it's yeah. like no I need to just accept this this Ugh, is great I know <laughs> It is super hard. So yeah, even like, it's so funny because I'm in just this weird space of being like, I don't need no man, like single girl energy, whatever. But then also like, I feel like I've done a lot of healing this last year and stuff of no contact and stuff with my ex to where I feel like I would be a better partner. I feel like I've just grown a lot and I know more what I want and what I will not tolerate and what my green flags are and stuff. But I don't know. It's just, it is hard because I still feel like that's my hard part of like, getting that switch because I've been in that masculine energy for so long right. I feel like I was in it in my relationship and then being single I obviously stayed in it because I'm like taking care of everything myself so it's very interesting so I feel like that's like my next level of healing and figuring that that out so it's hard I can, I can see where that would be hard because I think if someone was like here let me get that for you oh you need me to pick this up let me do it and not having to ask I'd be like fuck is wrong with you well, and one thing that, even though that's not how it should be I should be happy <laughs> one thing that's so bad of me is I'm the person who like it's gonna be hard for me to ask for help but mm, if I same. ask for help I want you to help me within 30 seconds or I'm gonna figure out how oh, to that's do it myself yeah so I'm really trying to work on that too oh. because I'm like oh can you come help me move this bookshelf it's like okay well I asked you a couple minutes ago I'm just gonna figure out how to do it myself I'm like no 
take a breath, ask again. Maybe you just didn't realize that you're on the time crunch mm-hmm. because everything in my life, I feel like if like, I want it, I want it right yeah. now. And even like the last couple days, there have been times where I need just help and I'm like, okay, I could probably figure out how to do this by myself. But at the same time, like I'm probably going to hurt myself moving this mm-hmm. or just like, wait, just take a, take a breath. You don't yeah. have to do it all. Well, I think that's cool that one, you've like found this, you know, healthy relationship and you're still obviously like learning and there's certain things that you, and you're right. It is kind of trauma from like Mm -hmm. past relationships and stuff of still having to grow and kind of build this new relationship together. So communication has also been big too. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't have that at all in my last relationship and going into this relationship we both made it very clear. If you're having trouble with something, if you are irritated, say something like, let's work through it. Let's talk about it instead of just holding it as a grudge. And that's been really big. I mean, we're both going through huge breakups in our life and people we spent so much time with. And that does a lot to your mind. Yeah. And just things you don't realize every day. There will be triggers and sometimes I'll shut down and it's like okay I need to realize one what triggered me to feel this way and two like what is this triggering inside of me yeah so that's been hard but good I feel myself start to shut down and he's the kind of person like what's going on talk to me and I'm like just give me a second like Mm -hmm. let me process this in my own and then then I'll tell you how you can help me because I love that we're all about that we're gonna get through this together but at the same time like just give me a second. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that too. I tend to shut down if I get yeah. angry. I'm just like, goodbye. But then it's, it's just so bad because that it just mm-hmm. isn't here it doesn't, and yeah. it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes. And yeah, no, for sure. What advice would you give somebody that maybe feels like they've been listening to this and they're like, damn, I feel like I'm not visualizing this person in my life, whether it's a friendship, family, you know, significant other, like what advice would you give them for just kind of how they're feeling one I feel like don't feel bad about talking about it Mm. I was always very private and there's definitely things that I'm so private about I mean I don't I haven't talked about any of this on my social media and my ex has blown it out of proportion on his social media Mm -hmm. so um there are definitely time and places for things but I just didn't realize all these things in my life that I was being impacted with are normal or other people are going through and how they dealt with it. So one was definitely reaching out to my clients, reaching out to my friends and Mm -hmm. people I was comfortable with and saying, these things I'm unhappy with, Mm -hmm. have you experienced this? Just getting the help from people around you because, I mean, people don't talk about not having sex in their relationship or not having communication or like not talking about finances. I don't know my friend's finances, but now that I've gone through this, I am more open about if they're struggling with things I know, or like we talk about those things. I don't even know the numbers, but yeah, it's healthy to know that other people around you are also struggling. That is so true. And, and just like wanting to work on making those better. Yeah. And having to be a, like a normal conversation instead of something you have to keep a secret. Cause that's so hard too. And I, I mean, I remember that too, for a very long time in my past relationship, all my friends loved my ex, like, and my family, like everybody loved him. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he was a good person, right? We're just not for each other, but I didn't open up about really what was going on. And even with yeah. like my close friends and stuff. So then when I started opening up, they were like, wait, what? Cause like, it's like, I took a mask off of him, you know? Exactly. And then when I started opening up and I'm like talking, I remember like it was actually, I think it was the weekend before everything shut down. Me and my girlfriends went and we booked a hotel in Portland. We're going to go see a podcast um, show, but it ended up canceling because obviously everything was closing. And it was like the next, we went that weekend, the next Tuesday, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of like, well, let's still go to the hotel. We're just going to, let's order room service. Just have like a little slumber party. And I started opening up to them because my ex and I got in a really big fight that weekend because he was mad that I was still going to Portland. And I started opening up to them about like kind of what was going on and like our conversation. And like I, a lot, a big thing that he did that I hated was like the name calling and stuff mm-hmm. and like cussing at me. And at the time I was like, oh, it's just relation. That's just what happens when you're mad at somebody. Like right. you call him a bitch or you tell him to fuck off. And right. although it bothered me, I thought it was just normal. And so I 
talked to them, I explained about it, they were like, what? You know, and then one of them, she'd been in her, her relationship for like 10 years. And she was like, he's never once called me a name, even in our biggest fights. Isn't that crazy? And I was like, my mind exploded. I was yeah. like, huh? And then my, my other friend was in like a newer relationship at the time, but they'd been together for like years. She was like, never. Like that has never happened. I'm like, it like blew my mind. Yeah. And, but that was something that opening up when you feel comfortable and you feel safe with people I think that's also really important don't just like trust the people that you're opening up with and don't tell every single one of your clients exactly about what's yeah. happening like, obviously we all have our certain clients that we're a little closer with in place yeah and if you have like a room full of people yeah but no that was something that really blew my mind and that's I think when I started really realizing like oh like maybe I'm not in this as amazing healthy relationship as I thought and I think that's also too then because then all these closures happened and yeah. you're stuck together and then the money stuff and I think that that kind of is what started all because for the longest time I just didn't I didn't talk about art problems mm -hmm. and not even to like complain but just to like talk with your friends about stuff and that I think that that really opened my eyes to like like this isn't what everybody goes through and just to know that I wasn't alone with that too so the other thing is is I just feel like in my past, and I think in yours too, I started to lose myself. Yeah. I was definitely shutting down because he was shutting down. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I was always tiptoeing around things. And then I lost myself. And that was really hard. And when I started doing 75 Hard Again, it's like, I love to do these things. And I was remembering how great it feels to feel great. And just remembering what I love. I mean, I love to travel and do all these things. And it's really important to keep doing those. I yeah. have friends that I travel with when I was with my ex because, one, I didn't want to pay for him to travel. Yeah. And then, two, I mean, he just was the kind of person who, like, didn't want to do things when we did travel. So if your significant other doesn't want to travel and you do, find other people you can travel with. It's, yeah. It's not unheard of. Like, it's totally yeah. fine. You can have fun as long as you mesh well with people because I've also traveled with people I do not That's travel so well true. with and then That's it's a so nightmare. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, just do things that make you happy still, mm -hmm. whether it's taking a mental health day and doing things like that, or maybe still finding hobbies you like to do and do those once a week. Mm -hmm. Don't lose those. That is so true. Because that, that happened to me too. Where I felt like I lost myself and you almost become like joined as one. And then you're like, wait, I should go do things or like hang out with your friends. And the other yeah. thing is like, do things alone. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like for a while I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I took a pole dancing class for a couple times loved it fun. it was so fun but I was scared like I'm gonna do it for months and I just mm. couldn't nothing would work out with friends going with me and then finally one day I was like I'm just gonna do it by myself mm. why am I waiting for someone else to go with me and I had so much more fun by myself than I think I would have with someone just yeah. because I didn't know any of these people I could look like an idiot if I wanted to yeah and it was great I love it that is like something that I've been wanting to, I, I've been focusing more on this year is even just like dating myself. Yeah. And I think even when you're in a relationship, you can date yourself. You like take yourself on a little date, you know, go to dinner. Or if you don't want to like quite do that, like take a class by yourself. And I just think there's so much of like doing things by yourself that helps you reflect and kind of like know who you are and not lose yourself, but also just yeah. experience new things. Once again, get into that new creative outlet of life and you're going to pull like ideas and inspiration from anything. So that's really cool. Um, wow, this has been amazing. Is there any like last little things you want to say or do you want to tell people? I don't know. Do you want people to follow you on social media? Yes. <laughs> anyway. um, I'm in the process of like completely rebranding my social media. So it's going to be a lot different. So cool. right now you can find me at McThicken, M-C-T-H-I-C-K-N. But soon I will change my name. Exciting. That's kind of a whole thing of what I'm gonna do okay cool yeah. yeah I'll link it in the show notes so you guys can follow I mean obviously like follow your journey because I think you got some yeah. fun things coming up and you know it's been great chatting and getting to kind of like talk about this stuff because like I said I have not this is just going to be kind of a different episode I think for yeah, my for audience sure. too so you guys will have to let us know what you think because although this podcast is a lot of business tips and insight and strategies there is such a big part of who you are and like the personal side of things and your past relationships and your stories and your traumas that make you the person that you are. And we all go through this shit in business too. It's not like they're separate it's not things. Perfect. No. And like your business is an extension of who you are and you know, it's just, it all goes hand in hand. So that is something that I was excited. You were open to talk about this stuff. Cause I know it's hard to like hash up relationship stuff and talk about those kind of things, but 
I do think it's important. And for me, like I want my audience to kind of know more of the other side of me and like what makes me who I am. And right. that is something that you can either connect with or maybe not feel alone. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm glad that we had this me conversation. Too. Hopefully I don't get any one star reviews <laughs> from, my, from my ex. I will die. (laughs) We'll know who it is for sure. (laughs) Oh, that'll be funny. But all right, cool. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I will have Megan's Instagram listed in the show notes. And thanks again for coming. Thank you.